What about the Scarlet Woman? You did raise it. What about her? I tell you what this world... Some are now calling her the woman who brought down a government. And let's keep moving forward. That's it. Can I kick it? Some are now calling her the woman who brought down a government. Well, perhaps that's a little melodramatic. But Margaret Trudeau didn't exactly help. That's it. Can I kick it? Just what kind of a woman would walk out on a prime minister leaving him to look after their three sons and Canada as well. George Negus, in this interview from Los Angeles, comes about as close as anyone to finding out. They've used just about every cliche in the book to describe you at some stage mm -hmm, or other. Mm -hmm. Which one's your favourite? Scarlet Except Woman. Can you get divorced? Mm. Well, I don't, doesn't matter to me, but I think that's the way things are done legally. I cer certainly wouldn't want to be a bigamist. Hey. It's a whole new deal, and I think I've found the secret of the campaign. I have a train, and I have Margaret. And, uh... In the last Canadian elections in 1974, Mrs. Trudeau, if that's what she can be called, was a driving force, even a vote-winning asset. Very, a very good... Uh good uh, vessel to deliver three beautiful songs into the world. Please welcome back to the program, Margaret Trudeau. How are you? I'm so well, thank you. Welcome back. Really well, thank you. Nice. Uh, the, the idea of getting to a place where you can write this book, because it's a, <laughs> because you've written memoirs before, but this is like... Oh, no, I was in my... Twenties. Yeah, but this what is like a memoir through a very different <laughs> lens, right? Exactly. I thought I knew everything when I was 20. It is very different looking back. And, you know, the words youthful folly come to mind. What was I thinking? What was he thinking? I think I think that over and over again. But the real problem was that after this birth of my second son, I had my bipolar condition, and I plunged into terrible depression. I'm life. And we didn't understand it. I had the most beautiful... I think even bigger, Canada. And let's keep moving forward forever. Some are now calling her the woman who brought down a government. And let's keep moving forward for it. Some are now calling her the woman who brought down a government. Well, perhaps that's a little melodramatic. But Margaret Trudeau didn't exactly help her husband's chances in the Canadian general election. As we all know, Pierre Trudeau lost the prime ministership that he'd held for the past 11 years. But Margaret is sitting on a fortune. She's written a book about their turbulent life together. And she even tries to explain that notorious lost weekend with the Rolling Stones. The book that Kiss and Tell might be more appropriate. That's so it. just... Just what kind of a woman would walk out on a prime minister, leaving him to look after their three sons and Canada as well. George Negus, in this interview from Los Angeles, comes about as close as anyone to finding out. They've used just about every cliche in the book to describe you at some stage mm -hmm, or other. Mm -hmm. Which one's your favourite? Scarlet Except Woman. Can you get divorced? Mm. Well, I don't, doesn't matter to me, but I think that's the way things are done legally. I cer certainly wouldn't want to be a bigamist. Today, it's a whole new deal, and I think I've found the secret of the campaign. I have a train. <laughs> and I'm In the last Canadian elections in 1974, Mrs. Trudeau, if that's what she can be called, was a driving force, even a vote-winning asset. And, uh... very, a very good, uh, good uh, vessel to deliver three beautiful sons into the world. Please welcome back to the program, Margaret Trudeau. Come in. How are you? 
I'm so well, thank you. Welcome back. Really well, thank you. Nice. Uh, the, the idea of getting to a place where you can write this book, because it's <laughs> a, because you've written memoirs before, but this is like... Oh, no, I was in my... Yeah, but this what is like a memoir through a very different lens, right? <laughs> exactly. I thought I knew everything when I was 20. It is very different looking back. And, you know, the words youthful folly come to mind. What was I thinking? What was he thinking? I think I think that over and over again. But the real problem was that after this birth of my second son, I had my bipolar condition, and I plunged into terrible depression. I'm going to ask Nate Yellen. Well, perhaps that's a little melodramatic, but Margaret Trudeau didn't exactly help her husband's chances in the Canadian general elections. As we all know, Pierre Trudeau lost the prime ministership that he'd held right. for the past and 11 years. we didn't years. understand it. I but Margaret is sitting on a fortune. Great husband. She's What's your favorite thing about this country? So, just what kind of a woman would walk out on a prime minister, leaving him to look after their three sons, and Canada Vice as President well. Nixon, President Truman, Reverend Clergy, fellow citizens. We observe today not a victory of party, but a celebration of freedom, symbolizing an end as well as a beginning, signifying renewal as well as change. For I have sworn before you and Almighty God, the same solemn oath. Our forebears prescribed nearly a century and three quarters ago. The world is very different now. For man holds in his mortal hand eccentric scarlet woman the power to abolish all forms of human poverty and all forms of human life. And yet the same revolutionary belief for which so our forebears fought are still at issue around the globe. The belief that the rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. Laws of nature, while they glorify those laws, Christianity breaks those laws. Because we had a Catholic marriage based on the old-fashioned principle of fidelity, and I was unfaithful. The simplest explanation of what the Rosicrucian Order is that we're a philosophical and educational organization. And Rosicrucians are both men and women around the world, and we study topics that are related to natural laws, things that are just laws in the world that if we understand them better, we can live in harmony with them. We certainly can trace our historical lineage back several hundred years, but then traditionally we also go back through, say like the alchemists, the medieval mystics, back to the mystery schools of ancient Greece and Egypt. So this is called the primordial tradition, it's sort of like the underground stream of human uh, spirituality. And we are a modern manifestation of that and historically connected to it. So it's really thousands of years old. The Rosicrucian order can be traced back historically to the 1600s when three Rosicrucian manifestos were published anonymously in Europe. However, they were perpetuating much older traditions dating back to the mystery schools of ancient Egypt, the Essenes, the mysteries in Greece such as the Delphic mysteries and Eleusis, Kabbalah, alchemy. So even though the Rosicrucian tradition was announced in the early 1600s, it was uh, perpetuating something much older. Well, mysticism is the practice by which one has a direct connection to the divine, however. No, I never said that. But did he ever even remotely mention the secret societies? Did he ever try to warn you? Educate you? No, he was under oath. Am I saying that these Freemasons have sacrificed children? No, I never said that either. But have they ever warned you about the secret society that believes that Lucifer is the savior? That functioning right under your nose, that secret society? No, not a chance. Julia Gillard admitted she belonged to one, but that's about it because they're all under oath. Every person you're about to see has taken the same oath as I did. No matter where on earth they're from, including Scott Morrison. Who 
will be prime minister first? Justin Trudeau, Mark Mulroney, or Ben Mulroney? <laughs> The world's most eccentric first lady is um, always used to be. Yeah. How do you wear that? Um, it's it a good fit. Do you think it's appropriate? <laughs> I don't know where too many first ladies, but I'm sure they're all lovely. in the country right now, I guess. Justin, but it's not just Justin, it's his whole team, and it's the whole idea of such change in our country. Mary, I work in mental health. Uh, none other than God Almighty. No one else is going to tell you this. Not your favorite singer or politician. is sitting on a fortune. She's written a book about their turbulent life together. They've used just about every cliche in the book to describe you at some stage mm -hmm. or other. Mm -hmm. Which one's your favourite? Eccentric. Mm -hmm. Eccentric, Scarlet Woman. Eccentric? Mm -hmm. yeah. The world's most eccentric first lady is oh. always used to describe. Yeah. How do you wear that? Um, it's a good fit. Do you think it's appropriate? <laughs> I don't know too many first ladies, but I'm sure they're all lovely, and I hope they're all happy. What about the Scarlet Woman? You did raise it. What about her? I think... And, uh, Some are now calling her the woman who brought down a government. And let's keep moving forward. For Accepted. Can I kick it?